And now, class of 2008, I invite up to the podium one of UVA Law's proud alumni. While he has pursued a more artistic path than our traditional graduate, authoring more than 15 novels and several made-for-television movies, he has always embraced and embodied the spirit of UVA Law in all his works of erotic legal fiction. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Jeffries. Oh, Mahoney. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it is with great honor, great pride, and a great sense of humility that you all welcome me here today. <laughs> now, I get asked a lot of questions. Uh, what is it like being a best-selling author? Where do you get your brilliant and sensual ideas? <laughs> what was it like meeting Alyssa Milano when she starred in your Cinemax hit? Clothes dismissed. <laughs> and the answer to that question, hell, the answer to all questions can be summed up for me in one word. UVA Law. <laughs> UVA Law, the place where I played my first softball game. UVA Law, the place where I had my first beer. I know, I was a bit of a late bloomer. But you know what? When I was heading off to school, my old man said something important. He told me, you want to pass the bar, you better pass the bar. The bar will bar you from passing. <laughs> now, my father was an immigrant, that might have been meaningless. <laughs> I did not let it get in the way. So I had my first drink at uh, the good old dandelion parade. Two important things happened that day. One, I had an experience with a young lady which would later serve as a pivotal plot point in my third bestseller, Premature Adjudication. <laughs> classmates go by dressed up as the characters from uh, Alf and Kindergarten Cop, and I realized I'd finally found a pretty good place. <laughs> I had finally found a place where my creative juices, which had been building slowly at first, but with a steadily increasing rhythm until they could barely be contained. <laughs> Let me give you an idea of what law school life was like when I started here. A little different. Uh, we had no internet chat rooms, there were no cable modems, no ballpoint pens. Um, shepherdizing was still done by hand, key sighting by foot. Uh, we had no Starbucks, no McDonald's, no tea, thanks to the Redcoats. <laughs> the sentiment of the day could best be captured in the popular refrain, Big Bucks. Big Bucks. No whammies. Stop! <laughs> now, I, I suspect I know why the Law School Foundation invited me here today. I, I imagine it's their not-so-subtle way of reminding me that, yes, my alumni donations are a little past due. But I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Even the best-selling works of erotic legal fiction they don't really sell all that much. I know what you're thinking. But David, actually, I prefer if you call me Mr. Dalbachi. You're right, that was presumptuous. <laughs> Mr. Dalbachi, your fourth bestseller, aided and arrested. It sold over a million copies. And it was made into an erotic Emmy award-winning movie of the week. How do you not have any cash left over? Let me give you a little tip. If someone puts a contract in front of you, be sure to have a real lawyer look at it. <laughs> I learned that one the hard way. Now, I imagine they also invited me here today because you wanted a good storyteller. Well, I'm going to let you on another little secret. All lawyers are good storytellers. That is our job. You, you will tell your client's story to a jury. Me, I will tell stories about a young, busty district attorney named Allie who wrestles with her sexual identity. <laughs> My sixth bestseller, Allie Bai. <laughs> this one is actually kind of good. <laughs> People at these things often give you advice, but I don't know what to tell you. I remember being in your shoes, the choices are out there. You could uh, go, be, go be a corporate slave at some kind of big firm. <laughs> no thanks. Not for me. But 
I did not mind using it as a setting for my second bestseller. <laughs> and breakthrough hit, Big Firm. <laughs> I tried public service for about a year while working on my third bestseller, Model Penal Code. <laughs> but in the end, it just did not feel right. <laughs> Extensively with Justice David Souter while working on my High Court novel, Amorous Curie. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's the story of an affair gone wrong in the nation's halls of power, where justices carefully scrutinize both briefs and boxers. <laughs> I consider Justice Souter to be one of this century's finest erotic legal scholars. <laughs> well, that didn't leave a lot left on the table for me. I knew I was too old to go back into dancing. <laughs> but luckily for all of you, I knew what I had to do. Write the great American legal erotic thriller. <laughs> Would you believe it was in my first year civil procedure class that I got the idea for my first bestseller, Erection Sustained? <laughs> or that Curl Dudley was the inspiration for my hard-boiled detective, Curl Studley. <laughs> now, that could be the point here. Opportunities abound at this school, and I do not mean opportunities for moot court or pro bono or pro bono. <laughs> no! I mean opportunities to write high quality, highly charged erotic legal fiction. <laughs> the facts speak for themselves. This is clearly one of the ten most erotic law schools in the country. <laughs> and with all that erogenous power comes a deed. D, responsibility. <laughs> to paraphrase from my bestseller, Inter Alia. <laughs> Some of you have read it, that's great. <laughs> the protagonist, a young, busty public defender named Teralia. <laughs> Dashing cad Rourke Laddingstone. <laughs> In response to a proposal of sorts, Teralia replies, If we must do it, we will do it the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so let that be my greatest piece of advice to all of you. Do it the way you like it. <laughs> Now, I don't care what you do, and I mean that, I really don't. <laughs> but whatever you do, or whatever people, tr whatever people try to do to you, <laughs> do it the way you like. <laughs> and just in case I am in any way unclear, I am talking about sex. <laughs>